thing. And today, AJ Strange Brew, and when the man that called Dave gets back, we will be talking 5 3 1 Eddie Guerrero matches. And let's kill some time while we wait for Dave. How's it going today, well, AJ? I think. Th- no, it's going great, Joe. Um, I, one of the problems that we have right now is I think it's important that we get out there. The wrestling world has lost a legend this week. Um, Queen Elizabeth has passed away, and her catches catch can style and what she did for British strong style, quite frankly, was absolutely amazing for all the years. So I think that um, our condolences go out to the whole family. Shout out to the Queen. And I wanted to bring up, actually, a wrestling loss we will be suffering as Pat McAfee is leaving SmackDown. What do you think of that, him getting a job with College Game Day? I do. Well, we need to point out this is not a permanent transition. He's going to College Game Day, but College Game Day only runs during the football season. So we will be getting Pat back at some point. Um, We just might lose him every fall to college football. Yeah, and that was actually something that WWE suggested. They didn't think that him having to fly overnight from SmackDowns to get to college game day, which college games typically take place on Saturdays, would be good for his health. So they pulled him away, and I don't know if that's something we'd see with Vince McMahon. Now that Dave's back, I will be stepping away until the PWI segment. You guys take it over. All right, well, I think this- I'm going to add to that real quick uh, because, yeah, I don't think Vince McMahon <laughs> would have allowed that. Um, and I think this is one of the great things about uh, maybe I don't want to say even just younger people, but people that are not. Vince is very different, obviously, than anybody that's probably in this uh, entertainment world. I mean, Hunter, I think, and people around him get the idea. OK, this guy being on college game day is good for our brand. And we don't need to put extra stress on him or his family. You take your time. And then when you're ready to come back, you bring out the best in you. And we get the rub by being associated with this anyway. Well, Vince is also a um, person who sleeps four hours a night and works out in the middle of the night and expects everybody to do exactly what he does. He doesn't expect people to do more than what he does. Unfortunately, he, he is absolutely insane when it comes to his work ethic and what he's done through the years. So he didn't really care for people's health when it comes to trying to do the same. Not at all. Now we're going to do the five, three, one. I know Joe's wants to do the PW insider segment, but I feel like we'd be a little bit. Um, I think we need to talk some, some of the stuff about what CM Punk and everything that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh. I know, I know you missed out in the beginning. You didn't oh. hear my, no, you didn't hear my tribute to the queen. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that we did already do the tribute to the queen of British strong style. Um, now that she's passed away, All I didn't right. want you to have to jump in there and get emotional. And All right, I appreciate but, you guys but now we could talk about a different queen and someone who's quite a bitch in CM <laughs> Punk. Hey, allegedly, listen, I, I get, um, being upset a little bit to a point with hangman page. I get that he was upset about a little misinformation with Cole Caban and stuff like that. Here's the problem. <laughs> if me and you get into a fight two, three months ago, and I don't choose to discuss that with you. <laughs> and you think everything's fine and we've moved on. I didn't just spec three months. I can just start my shit up with you because I'm still mad and I didn't address it. Well, it's also not professional to do things. Right. This is the second time not in storyline where he's taking shots at people at the wrong time. He took a shot at um, Hangman Page in the middle of a show when it's not in storyline. Right. And now you're in a media scrum and there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to bring up the EVPs, to bring up Kenny Omega, to bring up the young bucks, um, taking shots at the young talent, not wanting to listen, stuff of that nature. You're coming off of a great show that went fantastic yeah. and you're literally burying everybody behind it. That being said, mm-hmm. as an EVP, as someone, as you know, who is in management and has to deal with things on a daily basis. um, I can tell you that not once have I ever um, grabbed somebody in public. Have I gone back there looking for a fight afterwards? You can do whatever you want and we'll take care of that situation, but we're going to do it quietly, calmly. And I don't think it was handled correctly by your EVPs either. 
Right. Assuming that's how everything went down, there will be an investigation that's going to hopefully determine this. No matter no matter what went down, and I'm going to tell you this, from what I understand, even if Punk threw the first punch, you don't go back with three people to confront one person in a locker room situation when it comes to professional wrestling. Uh, they are suspended. So, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, too, um, I think another one crazy thing about this whole thing is that I get while Tony Khan didn't say anything, he's probably like, okay, I'm going to wait till this rides out and then maybe I'll talk to these everybody when we get in the back. It didn't get, <laughs> it didn't get that far. But what does it say that CM Punk thinks about Tony Khan and he just started all his shit right then and there? You think he would have sat next to Vince McMahon and did that same thing? Would have happened. <laughs> first, first, first of all, if you're sitting next to Vince McMahon and you start to do that, your mic's going to go off quicker than a freaking hiccup. Yeah. Second, I, yeah. yeah. I was just, I just listened to Prince, Prince Jr. and he was saying that um, if it was him, like you know, he's starting a promotion up. We said first off, he's like, I don't do media scrums anyway. I'm not really a fan of him. But if we did, he said I would probably immediately sell, tell everybody, okay. He says, I wouldn't address it there, but I said, this scrum is canceled. And then I would talk to whoever that was, him or her, and quietly say, you need to either figure out what's going on. You either work here or you don't. The media scrum, first of all, is a setup that should be done in storyline. And as much as it has a realistic feel to it, you need to continue to push forward. The whole point of a media scrum is to say, hey, look at what we did, and this is where we're pushing forward to. It's not wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Yeah, now WWE right. just did a media scrum over the weekend, too. Um, that's funny. I heard Meltzer um, talk about how, like, that wasn't the way to do a media scrum. Like, it was too much. Everybody was based in character and stuff like that. But I thought there was a little bit of, uh, like, I know Seth Rollins took somebody to task. But, hey, if you ask me <laughs> from a professional standpoint, I would much rather have that media scrum <laughs> over the weekend than the one they got. <laughs> Why Why would you not want to still be in character? To me, a media scrum should still be someone in character. You right. don't just move, you don't remove the veil of the storyline uh, just because you actually um, are in the media scrum. I think I misrepresented. I think what Dave was saying was um, try to still remain in character as much as you can, but also like, you know, don't be completely in character. You're trying to do this. No, half absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Which I can't. Like Swerve Strickland, if you watch later. Like in the thing, like he goes on the acclaim and he starts acting very heelish, but he's talking about things online. He's kind of like stirring up the pot. So he he really finagled that line really, really well. Swerve was great. Yeah. And even Tony Storm. Good. Keith Lee looked incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't think that's his bag. <laughs> but they're kind of playing that up too because Keith Lee doesn't go on social media much, but he did for this one. We're here. He commented on Swerve interrupting the acclaim, and he got on Twitter, and he said, man, I turned my back for one second, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay, so they're playing up that. Swerve very much going to be the heel. Um, yeah, it's an interesting time, and I think some of this stuff is fun. Um, I, I, wanna also, give AEW, I, I do want to give AEW a little bit of credit because they could have put on a crap show in Buffalo on Wednesday and I think they pulled it together pretty well. I think that they put the storylines together well. They did a great job of not mentioning it, but still getting the job done. Um, and they did a good job. And the show all around was entertaining. Yeah, I think Def Triangle is a great choice for the trios champions. Um, I like the tournament format. I like that we know MJF's going to be eventually to be the guy to meet. Um, I'll bring one more thing up before we get into our 5-3-1. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, which is going to be Eddie Guerrero, best matches, your favorite Eddie Guerrero matches. But uh, I heard this thing about Brian Alvarez. He had a comment about the WWE uh, MJF storyline that AEW is doing, where right, basically we're doing a storyline where MJF is going to try to win the title and use it as a bargaining chip. And he's telling everybody WWE is better. Alvarez says, we're going to let this play out. He said, but when I first watched this, he said, I wasn't a fan of it. He said, because it was one thing to do this a couple months ago. He said, when that show sucked and nobody cared about it. He said, but now the show's getting better. And now you got some people interested in that show. It's doing bigger ratings. And he said, do you really want to play this game and draw attention to WWE? Where Max is saying, you know, I'm, I'm my hero of the game. My favorite wrestler, Cody Rhodes. You know, the only con that matters, Nick. You know, is this 
uh, in your opinion, I mean, again, we'll let it play out, but off to the start of it, do, does, does this look like a good idea to you? It does get heat. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit old school when it comes to this. Uh, mentioning your opponents gives them media, yeah. and it, give, it puts eyes on them, and it gives them attention. Uh, I'm not saying you completely ignore the other product. You have to obviously pay attention to it, but to actually draw attention to a product that's doing that well right now uh, is a little bit dangerous, especially when Max might actually end up there at the end of his contract. Right. Yeah. If they don't have him like locked up, like ugh, that's scary to think. Of. Yeah. Ma Max once again showed this week what he can do. By the way, when yeah. he came out with the um, Sabers shirt on or whatever he was wearing, was he wearing the Buffalo Bills? Those Bills. Jersey, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's uh, when he came out wearing um, the Josh Allen jersey and he's um, playing up to the crowd. He showed what a baby face he actually could be. If uh, Moxley doesn't come out there and actually stop him, the, the, the crowd was actually eating out of the palm of his hand. I agree. And Moxley did great, by the way, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ultimate baby face. All right. Let's, um, let's kick it off. Our favorite Eddie Guerrero matches – and uh, before I get to my first list, I have one here, for, uh, a couple uh, a couple mentions. Uh, Scott, our buddy Scott, our friend Scott, he said that he couldn't pick one and he cannot disgrace the great name of Eddie Guerrero by putting one match because he's just too damn good. And uh, we'll see. Uh, he says uh, what we end up picking up, but uh, he says that uh, it was just too hard. He said Eddie's too great a wrestler. And Evan Ginsberg, former guest on the show, Associate producer for uh, the wrestler, and I think it was 365 days. Uh, it's a movie about the wrestlers on the road. Joe might get me in the comments with that, but uh, Evan Ginsberg, this guy is always whenever we do list. I love Evan Ginsberg, but he always has a joke. He'll always throw like a name like Plowboy Fraser in there or something. No jokes this time. Ever, Evan Ginsberg just says Eddie Guerrero versus Dean Malenko, ECW one hour TV match. Was wrestling elevated to art? So even Evan Ginsburg, who would like to normally joke around, is saying, "No, Eddie's too good." Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, I've got a gentleman who actually came in and was one of our special guest hosts yet uh, last week. Uh -huh. I've got friend of the show Pat Oates. Um, him, he has versus Chavo at the Royal Rumble. He's got versus Rey Mysterio at Halloween Havoc. Batista at No Mercy. Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. And Benoit, um, Nitro 1995. Uh, I would like to actually say he did invoke the Jake rule. Yes. Um, and he said every time he's ever wrestled Dean Malenko. There you go. Yeah. Dean Malenko. Oh. Oh, by the way, um, Pat Oates opening up for Tommy Davidson at Comics this weekend. That's right. Checking the comments. All right, AJ, don't forget to keep an eye out for some of these guys, too. I don't know if you... Uh... Oh, I'm already keeping a... I'm already oh, you already got a list. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my man. All right, I got Jesse Smith. Uh, he's got Brock Lesnar at No Way Out, uh, JBL yep. Judgment Day, Rey Mysterio Halloween Havoc, Kurt Angle WrestleMania 20, and RVD ladder match at Raw, which was also for the Intercontinental title. Fantastic match. Uh, one of the few TV matches that really stands out to me. I think we're going to see the JBL come up a lot. I think we're going to see the Brock come up a lot. And I think we're definitely going to see the Rey Mysterio um, come up a lot for Halloween Havoc 97. I agree. It is what your next list. So I've got David Cole, if that is your real name, and he's got Halloween Havoc 97 versus Rey Mysterio. He's got Brock for the title, JBL, Kurt Angle at Mania, and SmackDown Ladder Match versus Edge, That's which right. might be fresh in our mind because they keep talking about it every week. David Cole, uh, he designed our logo and uh, done rings for GCW and JPW. He's also a former wrestler, too. And yeah, guest. David Cole is absolutely fantastic. I joke around about if that is your real name, but obviously he merits the being on our show. Jesse from New Hampshire. He's got a list. He's got Rob Van Dam ladder match from Raw as well. AJ, maybe keep an eye on that RVD ladder match. That's two now. Yeah. Um, Too Los late. I didn't put him on there. <laughs> Los Guerreros versus Edge and uh, 
Ray versus Angle and Benoit, Survivor Series 02. Ray versus uh, CM Punk, IWA Mid-South. Uh, Ray at Halloween Havoc, of course. And Brock at No Way Out. So those last two make the list. I think that Brock Lesnar match is an excellent match. But I think the biggest thing about that match is it's just a moment. I think a lot of us yeah. can say we never thought Eddie Guerrero was going to actually win the WWE title. Not because of talent, but just because... In the WWE, the land of the Giants, it did not seem like they would ever. And the and, fact that he had some strikes against him before for drug issues and stuff. That, well, the match psychology behind that match was fantastic. It was very well done. But it is definitely the moment that people remember. And by the way, that's got three right now. Rey Mysterio has four with his Halloween Havoc. You've got, um, let's see here, JBL with two. And then Kurt Angle also has three. And those are your leaders. Well, that RVD ladder match has two. That's two, yeah, yeah. but I, that's not on my list, so that's not being counted. I'm going to keep it on. Um, <laughs> <it's>, uh, uh, <laughs> I have Matt Mann from the Mothership Facebook group. Um, he's got Rey Mysterio coming in once again. Okay. Los Gringos Locos versus Octagon Santo uh, and Santo in a hair versus mask match. You might remember that from Worlds Collide when he teamed up with Art Bar for those youngsters out there who don't know who uh, Los Gringos is, uh, Los Gringos Locos. We also have Dean Malenko, the last match there in ECW. That's going to be one to keep an eye out too. Yep. Uh, Brock Lesnar, No Way Out. That's in there again. And here's a great one that you might not hear a lot of just because it's become a little taboo. Chris Benoit from New Japan Pro Wrestling, the Super J Cup mm -hmm. 1994. Um, I believe, and I could be wrong, that that he was still wrestling. At, uh, Benoit was still wrestling as the Pegasus Kid in that Super J Cup. Might have been. That's our second Benoit match to actually make it too. Jesse from New Hampshire, shout out to uh, Chris Benoit as always representing. Um, I got another list here. I got Nick Sharp. Uh, I like the fact that this was just brought up because it's going to get a little steam. He's also got Los Gringo Locos versus E Hell Del Santo and Octagon Triple A when worlds collide. Uh, that's now got, that's now tied RVD for not being on our list. I got it. I got it. He's got also a two cold Scorpio ECW TV title match. Eddie's first ECW match. Then he's nice. got Ray at Halloween Havoc, Brock Lesnar at No Way Out, and the SmackDown Six Era. Pretty pick any match you want. He was in. He lied. He cheated and stealed. So I'm cheating with my last answer. There you go, Nick. Scott. Yeah. Sounds like he lied, he cheated, and he stole his heart. He might have stole his heart. I All right. Who's I've good? got John Charles Dean from the Booking the Territory Facebook group. He doesn't have any actual specific matches. He has opponents. He's got Brock Lesnar for the title, which is a match. However, yeah. he's got Ray Jr., then he's got Benoit, then Dean Malenko, and then Kurt Angle. Okay. Um, I got Mike Flynn. I'm just laughing because I'm looking at his list. Because I'll go straight to number five. He's got RVD, but at Backlash 2002. And so since that was Backlash, not Raw, I have to say uh, he has Ray at Halloween Havoc, number four. And then number three, passing the RVD, he's got Art Bar and Octagon against Eo Del Santo and Octagon at World's Collide. Thank, thank God I didn't put that other one on my list. <laughs> number two, Angle at WrestleMania 20. And number one, Brock Lesnar. No Way Out 2004. AJ, I only have mine left, so what do you got? I, I keep hearing a lot of Angle at WrestleMania 20. Didn't he wrestle JBL and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 20? He had a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania 20. With, uh, oh, he did? For some reason, I thought it was um, JBL and Kurt Angle for some no, reason. No, um, but that year... Uh, it, it, it could, be, it could be because... Him and Benoit at the end closed the show with both titles. God, Benoit gotcha. beat, uh, HBK and Triple H at WrestleMania 20. Yep. It, it, it could be because in my notes here of people to watch out for, I have JBL and Kurt Angle at Mania 20. JBL <laughs> and Kurt Angle at Mania 20. Yeah. That, that might be a what got stuck in my mind. But that's been, fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I've got Bombero Wrestling on TikTok. Um, Rey Mysterio Survivor Series 2005. So we got a different Rey Mysterio match. Hmm. Um, this person obviously leans a little bit toward, more towards the WWE version of um, Eddie Guerrero. We've got Edge No DQ, September 26, 2002. Yeah. We've got John Cena Parking Lot Brawl, Fatal 4-Way in 2003, 
And um, Brock Lesnar is number five on his list. I like it. Uh, and I'm going to so, so I'm just going to give before we go real quick. I'm going to give you a quick little total so we know where we're at here. Oh, so we you got <laughs> exactly. So we've got um, nine for Halloween Havoc Ray. Mm -hmm. We've got seven for um, the Brock Lesnar. Yep. And then we our third place is actually six of them. Kurt Angle WrestleMania twenty. Okay, interesting. So not too bad. And um, by the way, um, since you mentioned RVD, they're still at two. Well, they're about to be at three. <laughs> 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 I got Eddie Guerrero versus Edge from SmackDown. Uh, it's a TV taping. I don't remember exactly, but there was a ladder that was brought into the match. It wasn't a ladder match, but it got used. Uh, RVD versus Eddie Guerrero, Intercontinental title ladder match from Monday Night Raw. That was in Chicago. All right, here's ones to keep out for. I had to keep them in here. Eddie versus Mysterio, Halloween Havoc. Eddie versus Brock Lesnar, No Way Out, won the title. And Eddie versus Milenko at ECW Arena, the one-hour draw. I want to say something before you get to your list. On your previous list, you had said this person prefers the uh, Eddie Guerrero WWE version. I do want to point out, usually that's kind of a negative thing. But I think there is something, too, where Eddie – Maybe wrestled a little different style here and there and some stuff on independence. But the Eddie Guerrero that will eventually be in WWE, you know, he is one of the few guys i ever seen that he became just a complete package. Like he became, he was already so good in the ring, but then he was really able to take his character, really able to take that personality. It seemed like he developed a relationship with Vince where Vince took this liking to him. And yeah. Uh, Eddie Guerrero later on was untouchable. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not knocking him for leaning towards those WWE matches. I just have some early ones on mine. Yes. I do have the Los um, Gringos Locos on mine because that was one of the first times where I really got to see him. So to me, that was actually um, one of the great times. And going into that match, I'll be honest with you, I was more of an Art Bar fan. I, I, I Yeah, so I was more of an art bar fan, and Eddie really impressed me during that match. So um, that was big for me. Uh, D. Malenko, I'm with you. The one-hour um, contest in ECW, um, the two of them just tore the house down. I could watch that anytime. Um, if that's on TV, I will tune in and watch the whole hour. Um, I have Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 20. Um, then I also have Rey Mysterio at Halloween Havoc. And then I actually have um, him versus Benoit. Um, I'll be honest with you. I added it after I saw the um, New Japan one just because I do remember watching that when it happened. And even though it didn't stick out to me now, I actually took Brock Lesnar off my list and mm -hmm. actually added that to it because you see a young Benoit and a young Eddie Guerrero and to see the two of them before any of the demons came into play, before any of the world came in, and just two young kids that loved wrestling, absolutely phenomenal. Eddie um, and uh, Benoit in the early days of Nitro, when they were paired against each other, before there was really any storylines, and Eric Bischoff just wanted something different, and he was just having these guys come out there and wrestle. And I remember Benoit powerbombing Eddie, and it looked like Eddie's head was a basketball bouncing off the mat. Like, in the chops, they would just lay into each other, where both chests looked purple. And then they really did become like brothers. I mean, anybody oh, yeah. who anybody who talks about Benoit and talks about the break in Benoit says that he was never the same after Eddie Guerrero died, that that's when the break genuinely started to happen. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about Benoit and, you know, go into excuses or whatever because it's unforgivable. But him and Guerrero just had that special chemistry. They did. Now, what's the final total? So your final total and the only ones that really matter are Rey Mysterio ended up with um, 11. Yes. Um, so he's the runaway winner at Halloween Havoc. Right. Um, Brock Lesnar ended up getting all the way up to eight because he got one from you. Yep. And then Kurt Angle at um, WrestleMania 20 mm -hmm. ended up being um, next when he ended up coming in with eight, uh, seven. Sorry, But that's the people's vote. All right, we get to determine the final three. All right, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be RVD. Yeah, <laughs> I will pick up the top three that they got. Um, 
And uh, that Rey Mysterio one is so popular. Everybody loves it. I don't feel like it would take much for me to like discourage <laughs> you from not picking that one. <laughs> um, now, uh, in fairness, I did put that on my list. You did. Uh, I think the thing I when it goes into a favorite match for me, all right, you can have a bunch of things that happen in a match, and that for me is one of the best wrestling. They do crazy things, and they do tell a great story. Eddie's working on that master in that match, but I also think stakes. I think of moments. And I think of WrestleMania 20 when he's defended title against Kurt Angle 20 minutes. But I also think, I go back to what I said, I never expected this man to beat Brock Lesnar. Not only does he beat him, he beats him at the Cow Palace. Huge Latino representation. Eddie's got the flag and he's on the t- you know, the table and he's dancing there like that. His brothers ran the Cow Palace and his father ran the Cow Palace forever. It was literally their sanctuary of wrestling. That's my favorite match. I, I'll put Ray over Kurt, but like my favorite match is Eddie versus Brock just for that moment. And, and I, I actually, I hate to say it, but I agree with you. As much as I would rather, for a wrestling standpoint, watch the Kurt Angle match or for a good storyline, watch the Ray Mysterio match. And once again, the um, Lucha, Lucha's, um, uh, luchador style of wrestling that they do is fantastic in that match. But to me, the Brock Lesnar and him finally getting redemption. To me, that was his moment of redemption. We all knew everything that had gone wrong. It was his moment of redemption. It was his opportunity. Thank you. And yeah. Yeah. Good good, good job of that, too. Because actually, before I bring bring back Joe, I just want to wrap it up, too. That was the other thing. That story going to that match, Brock and everybody was talking about Eddie Guerrero being a drug addict. And you know, they, they leaned into that story and they talked about how Eddie was never, you know, nothing and a loser and all this. And Eddie cuts this promo beyond promos. And so he says, I am an addict, but the only thing I'm addicted to is this business and winning. And it is like goosebump moments. Uh, I'm not doing it justice. I might even be missing a few things, but Eddie is on fire for that whole, that whole storyline. So yeah, you heard it here first. Producer Joe's about to get in. Kane, number one luchador, and Eddie Guerrero versus Brock Lesnar. Our favorite. Although, although our, that, that masked luchador that teamed up with Rey Mysterio um, over the weekend looked great, too. Oh, yeah. I like that. Senior Edge. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get that PWI, uh, PWI Insider uh, segment going. Well, there it is. Oh. Pro Wrestling Illustrated segment. PW Insider, a little different, but the oh, yeah. 2022 Reader's Poll, the November issue. Oh, he kicked himself out. Shout out to Dave Shear. <laughs> First of all, the fact that uh, me and Dave had to have that every year that oh, it came right out. Here. Yeah. Now, this is the November issue. Question 22. Which current WWE superstar would you like to see? In AEW. What current WWE superstar? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. Interesting. Out of current AEW uh, guys. So. Uh, it doesn't say guys. It says superstars. Okay. Right. Um, well, there was a guy that popped in my head. Uh, mainly because I think it'd be interesting given this association. But uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Edge back in there. Just because of Edge and Christian. You know, no, uh, that, that, that'd be a good moment. That's, sure. Uh, and I bet you uh, for the heat, no one's going to say this. You Maybe you're about to. I'm going to make you mad. But the heat, they put Charlotte Flair in there. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was literally about to say, if you put Charlotte Flair in there with Tony yeah. Storm as the current champion and oh, knowing yeah. what went down when Tony Storm was leaving, uh, Oh, my God. that's uh, uh, That would be fantastic. I would love to see that. I would also, from just a pure wrestling standpoint, I would love to see Bianca Belair in there because I would love to see her versus Jade Cargill. I'll throw Gunther in there, too. Even though I'm very excited with Gunther slash Walter is doing right now in WWE, i love to see that guy go anywhere. So Love to right. see him versus Samoa Joe. There you go. All right. The readers of Pro Wrestling Illustrated had 11% AJ Styles, 10% Finn Balor, mm. 10% Sasha Banks and 69% others. And they did dude, not list others. Dude, if, if AJ was as over on TV as he has been in this um, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, 
he'd be on fire right now. I think the thing is, uh, if you ask this, like probably when this first came out or during the Vince era of WWE, that might have been my first couple answers because those guys were seriously misused. But now we're seeing AJ and Finn getting the spotlight on them. They've been in the main events. We've seen video packages for AJ Styles before he takes on Bobby Lashley. Yeah, I would say most likely they got these votes just before summer, maybe late spring. Now, question 23, which current AEW wrestler would you like to see in WWE? Well, first one that pops to mind is MJF. Yeah, it's a spoiler. <laughs> but, like, you know, especially now, like the, the thing I would worry about before would have been Vince handicapping him. But, uh, I mean, obviously there might be still things. Hunter might be a little – and, again, I don't know because Hunter knows what he's going to be getting. And I feel like Bruce Pritchard and all those guys are big fans of him. So, yeah, I mean, MJF's clearly the guy to me. I mean, there's also a part of me that wants to see, obviously, Kenny Omega. I would love to see Kenny Omega in the WWE. I think that uh, he would have a hell of a shot there. Um, and then there's some people who I don't think are um, used necessarily. Uh, I think he's not technically under contract anymore to AEW, so he could be going there. Lance Archer, I think, would be fantastic in the WWE. Sure. Yeah, now MJF got 42% of the vote. Wardlow got 7% of the vote. Ricky Starks got 5%. Others got 46%. And among the the other vote getters are Jade Cargill, Austin Gunn, and Sammy Guevara. Austin Gunn. <laughs> not into my mind. I'm not sure Jade Cargill is ready yet for the WWE, to be honest with you. Um, she's got to look for it, but I don't think her wrestle skills right now are currently on the par with some of the NXT. I don't think they're on par to be with some of the women that are on the main roster. Maybe Austin Aaliyah. Austin Gunn, though, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. No yeah, I'm just going to keep ignoring Austin Gunn. <laughs> Question 24 is an interesting one. Which international wrestler would you most like to see compete in a U.S. promotion? Mm. Well, that thanks to the sense. Forbidden Door, we've seen a lot of them actually compete right. inside the um, U.S. promotions. Um, but I'll just say, how about this? Just because it's not likely, uh, Okada but in WWE under a Triple H regime in main events against guys like maybe Gunther or Seth Rollins or Roman like or Drew. like Those would be some matches that would be excellent. I mean, I'd like to see Kenta in some of those matches with Gunther and um, those guys also. I think that that would be fun. Kazuchika Okada got 42% of the vote. Kota Ibushi got 4%. And others got 54%. Amongst them, Tyler Bate, Kenta, and May Sergura. <laughs> like Tyler Bate's been here, but um, I'll tell you one name that they didn't mention, and I didn't think of either. But uh, it came out with Will Osprey. I mean, he's here now; he does a lot of stuff. But again, Osprey against some of those. It's really almost like saying which guys you'd like to see in WWE at this I, point, though, because one thing AEW has done so great is they have done stuff with New Japan. I, I think Jay White would be fantastic in the WWE also, as long as they allow him to be himself on the mic. And that, and again, we'll go on to the next one, but that's the thing. Again, going back to this new regime, it gives us all hope if these guys ever did come to WWE now, like, oh, shit, that would be a good matchup, and we might get to see that. Yeah. All right, question 25. Which currently inactive star would you like to see make a return to a major promotion? And for this one, you got to take yourself back in time to, like, March, April. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I was going to go back to like Masahiro Chono, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring it back a little bit. Um, Inactive. I mean, we're Ron getting messages here. from a place in New Hampshire saying Chris Benoit. I don't know who this is or <laughs> what this is about, but mm, I, I think yeah. I think he said the Pegasus Kid. Um, <laughs> we and Tiger yeah, Mask. I sure you. I know uh, Black you Tiger. <laughs> um. <laughs> John Cena, I mean, he's a big name that's out there that we haven't seen. It's inactive. Obviously, The yeah. Rock. I mean, you're not getting The Rock back except for maybe you're, one you're, more. You're missing, you're missing one of the most obvious ones, Bray Wyatt. Sure, Bray Wyatt would be great, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of, like, big-time wrestlers that are not out there competing right now. Um, yeah, Bray Wyatt's good. Uh, 
geez, I'm trying to think of people who maybe who just showed up because I feel like when you said you have to go back to March, April, there's probably somebody who showed up that we're not thinking of that has made this list. So hit us. Wyndham Rotunda got 22%. Bray Wyatt. Claudio Castagnoli got 10%. Yep. The Rock got 11%. <laughs> and others got 57%. Amongst others, Johnny Gargano, ah. Bailey, and Paige. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I had a feeling Bray Wyatt was going to be the big one. I don't know why. It just just struck me. Even Even this last weekend, you know the big rumor was that during the main event that Bray Wyatt was somehow going to be involved once again. Um, no, whatever. There's a big event. Everybody's always like, Ooh, maybe Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And it may be, and I know a lot of people are talking about Bray possibly working for Freddie Prince Jr.'s promotion and getting a big offer from there too. So he's just always seems to be in the, he, he just has to be careful. Cause he's going to get to a point where people have done this so often that eventually they're just not going to give a shit. Now, this next question is funny now, but at the time it was it was a good question. Assuming Vince McMahon is the most influential person in pro wrestling, who is the runner up? Uh, uh, now, Triple H. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and at that time, I probably would have said Triple H or Nick Khan. Um I mean, what about Tony Khan? <laughs> right. You can say Tony Khan. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's interesting. That's an interesting discussion point, right? Because Tony Khan, yeah, Tony Khan, Tony Khan is clearly the head of the number two promotion in North America and most of the world. But it's not the brand, right? It's not Kleenex. It's not Coke. That is WWE. So at the time of this, is the second most powerful person, the second most powerful person in WWE, which we would have been arguing about that time. We probably would have been arguing Nick Khan or Triple H. Let me give you the results, and then you guys can discuss it. Okay. So Tony Khan got 74% of the votes. Sure. Nick Khan got 10% of the votes. I love this. Stephanie McMahon got ah. 2% of the votes. Ah. Paul Levesque got two percent of the votes wow other got 12 percent of the votes well remember when this came out would have been in the middle of triple h oh, yeah. taking his steps back and having the heart attack and uh or sorry episode um it would have been in the middle of that so i could see why it would be two percent if you took that vote again right now right. i have a feeling it might go in a different direction right yeah, I'd be very interested to see. So, again, how about this? I'll pose the question out there. Who is the second most powerful man in wrestling now? All right. Let's I, – I mean, who's, who's the most powerful who's, who's, man? Wait a minute. I was going to say, who's the first? Right. Is it – and is, is it even a man? Is it Stephanie McMahon? Is it Nick Khan? Is it Triple H? Where, so, here we go. How about this? Quick, we'll break up. One through four, in your opinion. Tony Khan, Nick Khan, Stephanie McMahon, Triple H. Who's the most powerful? Don't be afraid to put Tony Khan one or four. Let's just answer this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, but here's the funny thing. Technically, the COOs are combined. You have two co-COOs. Technically, they should be the most powerful people in this. So but, Nick and who's, but who is talking about them right now? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> but just because they're not talking about you doesn't mean you're not the most powerful people. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, I'm going with Nick and Stephanie. Be, yeah, Nick and Stephanie. Tr Triple H. Then, then Triple H, then Tony yeah. Khan. Yeah. Yeah. That makes and, sense. And, yeah. And it could because, be Tony someday if AEW gets to that next level where they're actually beating Raw and SmackDown. And they're actually, you know, that, that changes the story too if that ever happens. Let me tell you something. Triple H is getting all the credit right now. And they are running with his ideas. I get that. He's getting all the credit. But at the end of the day... He can't do anything without Stephanie and actual and Nick Khan going. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure there's some things that he has. Just I mean, he, no, he has autonomy. Right. I'm not saying he has no autonomy. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm just saying if it's a real big decision, right? Um, I think creatively, it's all him. Yeah, but there's big decisions being made, and oh, one sure. of them, one of them was going over to Clash at the Castle. How big of a show did that end up being? Sixty-four thousand people, and the crowd was on fire the whole time. Well, here's the thing about that show. I just 
real quick. So that show was already obviously Vince and everybody had that one already yeah. on the calendar. But how better was it where I think me and Joe have talked about this off air before too, where you're having people announced in the crowd like Bret Hart, Adrian Street, your trainer, AJ, I'll throw it out there, who are actually not only like we're not getting a graphic, we're not getting a you know, we're getting the Hart family is here, blah, 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 Brett the Hitman Hart. Oh, and our special guest, Adrian Street, you know, and we're, we're doing the graphics and we're showing a little bit of the footage and stuff. And Tyson Fury is in the back talking to McIntyre or talking to Roman. And then yeah, has- what a great segment that was to end the show. Right. <laughs> a little weird. Actually, I heard someone say that they think they forgot to cut the feed out. And that's why it was almost like a house show vibe. Like that's something to do with the house show. Well, even even Drew McIntyre said he's like, I- I'm not sure if we're actually still on the air here. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, I gotta ask you, after the events this past week, can AEW make it to the next level? The thing is. What's the next level, too? That's the big thing, right? Is the next level ever going to be you're truly beating or competing with WWE? That is so – who knows, right? Because They need, they need a more co- corporate structure, and I hate to say this, but they need to actually have a more co- corporate structure. What they're doing right now where um, it's everybody's buddies are the bookers and producers is old-school wrestling, and well, old-school wrestling only takes you so far. Well, actually, the part of the thing, too, is Tony's been uh, booking everything in the last couple of years because, you know, he wanted to make sure he get his hands on everything. He's been, as far as I know, booking both Darks, Dark Elevation, Dark, AEW Rampage, AEW Dynamite. And uh, Conan uh, talked about his podcast. He recently sent Tony a message to Triple Mania uh, about Triple Mania. And he took him a little while to get back because Tony was busy with the drag- Jaguars. So... You're running like a soccer team. You're helping run a football team, and you're responsible for all your content at AEW. To get to that next level, I think one of the things he's going to have to do he's going to have to actually delegate authority more. And well, know. and the problem is, is EVPs, the people that were directly underneath him, just went into a locker room and got into a brawl with uh, your world champion. I don't know if they were looking for a brawl necessarily, but <laughs> they found one. So. Yeah. Yeah, and your world champion also called. I don't know if the I don't know if the Bucks have ever gone into a room looking for a brawl. And I'll I'll say this: (laughs) we'll get back to this. uh, As far as like Punk goes, because we didn't mention this earlier too. For people who don't know, like that uh, AEW feed uh, for the media scrum, the uh, it was it started a little bit late. People were asking what was the first question that uh, when CM Punk was asked by uh, Nick Halsman. He wasn't asked anything. Like Punk got in there and asked Nick, are you friends with Scott Colton? And Nick actually wasn't. He's like, no, we used to be. We don't really see eye to eye. He's like, well, I'm not friends with him either. And then he, you know, he just went off. There was so, no- there was, so there was no question. So his, no, his Tony comment. Answered, Tony, I should have said no comment. And that's how you know Tony was shocked because there wasn't a fucking question. If you go back and watch it, because I saw the first on anything, there was never a question. <laughs> like, so it's whatever. So, so, so it's not even like Nick anybody House- even asked him. Go ahead. No, Nick. Nick Houseman is from Chicago, so yeah. Punk recognized him right. and must have had. I don't know if there was an article or something that led up to this. It feels like there was something either going on in Punk's head or something that he read yes. that must have led to this. And I think they so, used to do, imp- I think Nick Houseman uh, and um, Scott Colton used to do improv together too. They did. I, yeah. I, I think a lot of us, when it came to the WWE, just automatically gave Punk a pass and said, you know what? I believe that, you know, it, it, it could be the WWE, WWE's assholes. Right. It could be them. Right. Um, but when you keep going from place to place and keep having problems right. everywhere you go, eventually you have to start to wonder if this person's the asshole. And I'm not right. just saying that because he's a Cubs fan. I mean, <laughs> that could be the reason. But... At some point, you got to point the finger at yourself too and go, I'll "Wait, why? Am, why I'll am I pissing off all these people?" Shout out to Ace Steel, former guest on the show. I know he might be getting some negativity right now, but we want you back, brother. If you ever get a hold of us, you bite whoever you got to fucking bite. Ace Steel, we love you. You are. Oh wait a minute, I, I'm show. actually going to go even farther and stick up for Ace here. Ace's <laughs> wife was in the locker room watching Punk's dog yeah. when everybody came in and when all of this started to happen. If you if you if you if your wife is in there or your girlfriend is in there and all of a sudden you see um four grown ass men going at it 
and your wife's there, you're going to jump in too. I, do, I think there's an interesting story though. There's a story apparently that came out that Kenny Omega tried to grab the dog and get it to safety. <laughs> Which I just, I don't know if that happened or not, but I like that there's one story where Ace is just biting somebody's like face or ear. And then another story is like Kenny's trying to rescue this dog. I hope that there were cameras. I hope there's some way to actually physically solve this investigation. I, I will tell you, in, way I, I will tell you in general that uh, locker rooms are not known for having cameras unless planted there by the company. And now, I want to ask you a question, and maybe this hold is a on, question. Hold on, Nobody... we get back to this poll. All right, we'll get the poll. End of the just, show. Just, just one question, please. Right. We're going could off. Could it be? Could yeah, it be a work? Further off the rails. <laughs> could it be no, a it's work? Not a, it's not a work, but it could turn into a work. I believe anything could be a work, so I believe that there's a possibility this is all a work. Let's get back to the poll. <laughs> All right, question 27. Which American independent promotion is the most influential? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Was it non-American or American? No, American. American. Yeah. Oh, WWE. No, independent. Oh, independent. Oh, I didn't hear the independent part. Most, Sorry. Most influential independent promotion. Yeah. Um, GCW? Yes. Yeah, that's a great answer. GCW. Because I don't consider impact... Um, uh, an independent right now, you could argue, but I think you know they're not. Yeah, I don't. Know. I like GCW. I mean, game Ch game changer has people coming from AEW to actually be their champion, and they've done shows in Japan. They're out in yeah. California, down the east, and they're everywhere. So I think game changer is a great answer. They're set to go back to England, but game changer wrestling got thirty five percent. Major League Wrestling got nine percent. Ring of Honor got nine percent. Pro Wrestling Gorilla got 7%, and other was 40% with Beyond Wrestling, Ohio Valley Wrestling, and West Coast Pro Wrestling receiving votes as well. I had trouble with MLW, too, just because they have you know some TV here and there they've been on stuff. But I, I, guess have, trouble, I have trouble with Ring of Honor since they're owned by a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, they're not, well, that, <laughs> I don't know about what it's count, but... But also, too, like if you ask me what's bigger, MLW or Game Changer, like Game Changer, I think, has more um, like just buzz behind it. I like, feel I like Game MLW, I, but... I hate to say it because I love MLW, but I think Game Changer's passed them by. They just have more buzz, and I, they feel like they are an independent promotion. Even yeah. when they put on their shows, when they put on pay per views, which ones are you chomping at the bit at to see more, the MLW pay per views or your GCW pay per views? Yeah. Well, MLW does so few pay-per-views that right. when they actually hold one, it's worth getting. I think last time it was the Von Eriks that made me buy the MLW one. Sure. Yeah, and With I'm not Von taking... Eric versus, uh, at the time, the Dynasty. Which yeah, was... and like I said, yeah. I'm not taking anything away from them. I'm not taking anything away from MLW. I think that they're a great promotion. I like how they work. But right now, I think GCW is just red hot. And MLW is on hiatus right now, so they just don't have the buzz behind it that they once did. You know, they're actually bringing Willie Mack back for their next event, which I'm good, good too. Sure. Yeah. Are yeah. they calling? Are they calling the event the Return of the Mac? <laughs> no, they missed out on that one. Now, question twenty-eight: What is the best wrestling promotion outside of the U.S.? Oh, I mean. I guess New I mean, Japan. Pro Wrestling. Japan? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if anything else has got that kind of recognition, or I mean, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some votes for maybe DDT, Rev Pro, and some of these other promotions. Hell, NXT UK as a brand would have been interesting just to put out there. At I mean, Progress, point. right? Um, but yeah, I, I and Jimmer. Um, but yeah, yeah but I, how, how do you not go for New Japan? Go to Pro Japan Wrestling? Shimmer is actually. Part US of New case. Japan, Are you right? thinking? Oh, is no. Shimmer? Yeah. Uh, stardom, thinking, I think he's thinking of. Stardom. stardom. Yeah. Yeah. Stardom. From, I believe. Yeah. Shimmer's yep. out of Florida. Yep. New Japan Pro Wrestling got 76%. There you go. Stardom got 10%. Triple A got 4%. Triple a. All Japan Pro Wrestling got 2%. And others got 8%, being DDT Pro. Progress and Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. Is All Japan pretty much just living off their past name at this point, though? They do some things, but they're not. I mean, they have a streaming service. It's not yeah. widely available. Yeah. A while ago, they were putting up some of their things on Fight, which I was buying, but they don't. They don't them. have as regular so, a service as New Japan. 
Right. So one of the the reasons why I don't think of AAA is when you say outside of America, I have a tendency of thinking North America. So I consider AAA being part of that same thing with Slam Pro Wrestling out of um, Canada, stuff of that nature. I, when I think of – when you say American wrestling, I don't think USA. I think North America. Gotcha. Now, this next question, obviously, AJ, you're not going to be – well, you guys probably both won't be as big with this, but assuming New Japan is the most influential Japanese wrestling promotion, who is the runner-up? And I'm just going to give you the results because you got to start them. Okay, DDT, I was going to say, but go ahead. I was going to say stardom because they finished second in the poll to <laughs> biggest. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. This is crazy. Stardom has 33%. All Japan pro wrestling has 25%. That's got to be on name alone wow. because they're yeah. beating pro wrestling. Noah, who's got 21%. Right. Dragon gate, 8% DDT pro seven others, 6%. Now and that's, that's what I was saying with the All Japan name. Like, I don't know what they're doing right now. It could be excellent. So I don't, I don't know. They could, I can't judge them. But are they getting votes in this magazine simply by their past name value? Uh, I don't think they're going based on their past name. I think Giant Bob is doing tremendous things there. Um, Stan Hansen, I love the way he tears it up when he teams up with Vader. It's Johnny fantastic. Ace. Yeah, Johnny A is killing it. And I mean, I stay vaguely familiar with Japanese wrestling, and I would think pro wrestling Noah would be bigger because you've had American stars like Anthony Green go over there, Ninja Mac. There have been others now. I think it's also helped stardom with their tie-ins with New Japan. I think that the fact that they've had that tie-in kind of together. And has, we're going to get um, a women's title soon. Exactly. I think that's helped to grow the stardom product. And that and the fact that the women's wrestling in Japan is so athletic and so competitive. I think that it really helps to build up that brand. So good for them. Hey, this isn't the comedy cast anymore, but I just got a text from a friend of ours, Kristen, who had a real good zinger this week that Joe used, but uh, he got another one. This wasn't from him, but he saw it. Someone apparently called Punk's pipe bomb, the gripe bomb. Mm. That's a good one. Now I got two last questions. That's, that's here because to- you can't say bitch bomb. I got two last questions here to help finish off this week's edition, and we probably have another two weeks left of this. But question 30, what is the top heavyweight championship in pro wrestling? Mm. Universal championship. Oh, I guess, yeah. I I still thought of it like as they divided it up, and they might have been at this point. But, yeah, that's interesting because – all right, I'll make an argument for AEW, too, a little bit here. Uh, Yeah. Maybe not now because they don't have a chance <laughs> right now. But uh, when they did, John Moxley, when he was on that run, Moxley was having to me just the run of all time. You, you mean you mean his initial run with the belt, no, or I mean, his in or his interim championship? That is an interesting point, right? Because he technically. <laughs> so to me, yeah, I guess it really is. Like I mean, if you look at it, Roman, we were on an over two year run now where he is the draw. He brings in ratings, so yeah, it's kind of hard to deny that. I'm sure they're. I, I don't know about this magazine though. I'd be interested. How about Mandy Rose with her long run down there in NXT? Stop that shit right now. Go ahead. Well, that'll be up <laughs> in the next question. But WWE Universal title got 57%. AEW World Heavyweight title got 20%. IWGP World Heavyweight title, 15%. NWA World Heavyweight Championship, Whoa. 5%. Others, 3%. I, I'm just happy NWA's title actually made it onto this list. I can't that believe is, they beat out Impact. That is fantastic. <laughs> I just I wouldn't see it. But. And we will um, end with quest. Oh. No, no, I would also like to point out that New Japan only lost by 5% to um, uh, AEW. So that's kind of yeah. cool, too. Now, question 31, the one we'll end on this week. What is the top women's championship in pro wrestling? Well, it's not Mandy Rose's NXT championship that she's held forever. <laughs> right now? I mean, we don't even, again, Thunder Rose is out with an injury. Um, at one point, I would have said maybe Britt Baker uh, when she was champion. Uh, remember that when this poll came out, that Britt Baker might still have actually been champion when the poll yeah. started being taken. But I'm going to answer that it was now. So, um, 
I think it's got to be Bel Air because she's the one that's winning the big matches. And so that's the Raw Women's title. And uh, she's beating Becky now. And so she would be the top person for me at this current point. Yeah. Well, they didn't say champion. They're looking for the belt. The belt. Yeah. So to me right now, yeah. it's the Raw Championship because the person makes the belt. Yeah. So I, I would go with that. I'd go. With, you know what? I'm going to go with the SmackDown Women's Champion. Oh, Liv, huh? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I, Liv, Liv was nowhere near being the champion at that time. That's true. Well, the WWE Raw Championship got 37%. Oh. AEW World Championship, 22%. Mm. World of Stardom Championship, 14%. WWE SmackDown, 11%. And others got 16% among the other vote getters, Knockouts World Championship, and NWA World Championship. You know, I feel like the Knockouts Championship should actually be a little higher in some ways. Like Impact Wrestling, one thing they've done is really done a great job with, with women's wrestling. I, I like that what uh, Mandy Rose has done for the NXT title and making it so that it's not even yeah. mentioned on the poll. Um, congratulations, Mandy Rose, because that has been a belt for years that was literally considered a wrestler's championship and would show up everywhere. People would be like, oh, the, yeah, the women's NXT champion. So New, great job, Mandy Rose, and really bringing it to the next New level. unified champion. Yeah, unified, absolutely, by, by far. Now, if you look at the numbers for men's championship, it was such a runaway for the WWE. But looking at the ladies' numbers, WWE is just above AEW. What does that say about women's wrestling that it's well, – so good that it's like across the board all these companies have these great rosters which creates great champions and like raises their titles i'll, I'll play a little devil's advocate too here and, and not necessarily just because it was good although women's wrestling's good i think it was also to look how wwe was booking their champions at that time in the women's division up and down where it's a little bit and if Britt baker wasn't champion here at this point you know there's probably a little undecisiveness now one of the things Triple H has done as soon as he's come in, we've seen a new faction with Bailey, and we're seeing an emphasis on women's wrestling again. So I'd be very interested to see how this would shape up next year. Not only that, but look even internationally. Once again, I hate to keep harping on stardom, but for them to get 14% of the poll and be able to be right there on that list shows how much women's wrestling around the world has elevated. And they didn't even mention... Um, NXT UK, which even though it's folded up now, was one of the hot spots for women's wrestling. Yeah, Mako Satomura is a champion. So. Yeah. So definitely now we've reached the end of the poll for this week. What should we do for a live 531 next week, guys? You hey. know what? We we focused a little bit on women this week. Um, maybe we can do something, um, to do with, uh, women's professional wrestling here. Um, maybe, um, dream matches. Yeah. I think that is athletic as she is. We can either do her or we can do Tony storm. Let's do Bel Air. There you go. All right. So we'll do Bel Air so you know what? next week. And how about Tony storm the week after? I was going to say, you know, what might be fun doing Bianca this week and then doing Tony next week. I say it all the time now. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we get out of here today? Uh, I just want to mention again, I don't I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the show, um, Joe Doring from Impact Wrestling has um, brain cancer, mm -hmm. and it has returned, and they're doing a t-shirt right now. It is $30 on Impact Wrestling, um, but 100% of the pro pe um, sorry, Impact Wrestling shop, 100% of the proceeds for that t-shirt actually go to help joe it's not like 10 percent or something like that 100 percent of the proceeds are actually going to help joe doring i think that's over at shopimpact.com so that would be a yes. good thing and dave coming off of last week you weren't on the show how was that labor day bread delivery uh between that and all the wrestling i managed to squeeze in i'm still exhausted uh i still am getting through this week but uh things will be back to normal come sunday um ufc 279 is also this saturday so excited for that and uh we'll be having some uh videos we'll be dropping here on the uh 
on the channel. So check it out. Along those same lines, Dave, um, I also, you know, watched all that wrestling last weekend and I spent Sunday actually in Salem, Massachusetts, uh, with my daughter Morgan. It was a fun trip. We had a great time. Um, if you guys are ever in Salem, please check out Boston, um, Boston Burger Company. Absolutely tremendous food there and the service. The servers were absolutely um, nice as can be. So please, if you're ever in Salem, check them out. Well, that's great. And as our schedules open up going more into the fall and winter, we'll be expanding some more of what we put out there. Just keep an eye on our YouTube TikTok, all the obvious social medias to stay up with it. And we will see you again next week, guys.